Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the best NASes for multimedia in 2018 to buy. Okay, so so many of you out there, when you want to buy a network attached storage device, you are doing it for multimedia. Maybe you've got piles of 1080p and 4K media knocking around, you've got box sets, movies, more and more, and you want to enjoy that media as well as your own music, photos and home movies, um, you know, once you've recorded it for your family and stuff like that, that you want to enjoy those movies on in, in the way that you want to see them, on your TV, on your phone, on your iPad, on your laptop, out there on holiday, wherever you want it. So I want to talk about the top three NASs that you should buy here at the end of 2018. Now, full disclosure, not all of these have been released this year, because in some cases, there are devices outside of 2018, even 2017, that are just unbeatable in terms of what they give you. So this is about the best one to buy now in 2018, not what came out this year that was very good. So if you're going to be disappointed, now's the time to leave. But I'm going to talk about the best three NASs for multimedia. So just before I get to those though, it is worth mentioning about the importance of the priorities, what you should be looking for, what matters the most about a multimedia NAS. Now the three factors you have to bear in mind are the following. One, capacity. So not just the available storage for now. So if you've got three terabytes of storage, you should put a three terabyte storage drive inside your NAS. That's madness. And I know it seems obvious, but too many of you don't plan ahead. So make sure you have got more capacity than you're going to need. More than likely, take whatever you've got and times it by 0.5 of whatever that is per year. And that's not the most precise graphic, but I will say that the amount of media you generate it's not going to be the same every year. It's only getting it bigger each time. So whatever you've got, try to add 50% extra capacity for every year ahead. So remember that. And my advice, never go lower than 4 TB in this current age. That is the sweet spot after RAID. Secondly, access. What way do you want to access your media? Do you want to access it over the internet via HDMI? What devices do you want to watch it on? How do you want to enjoy your media is important because different NASs provide a different you know, level of support for different output devices. So make sure the device that you buy is better suited for the intended output of your NAS, be it for one or many devices. And that's mainly the way I've picked my top three because each one is dedicated to a different media user for the best, way and best of its class. And lastly, playback. Now, playback isn't the same as uh, where an access and output because playback is very, very important for you guys out there that are one, watching stuff of very specific resolution or, or file format. Maybe you're watching insanely dense MKV files. That's gonna play its toll on the hardware inside your NAS. Uh, equally, if you're going to be using certain applications such as Plex Media Server, MB, Twonky, DLNA, or first party apps from the NAS provider. The device you choose to watch your media on will largely dictate the NAS you go for because some NASs are very modest in hardware, but that's because they can't support programs like Plex because of something called transcoding. When you reshape a file to be more suited to the device you're going to watch it on, other NASs provide you with such horsepower under the bonnet that it can play anything on anything. And other NASs are devised uh, device to be better fitting for music over video or video over photo or photo over music. It's very dependent on that NAS. So let's get down to it. These are my top three NASs for you guys out there that are buying a multimedia, that will need it for a multimedia need at the end of 2018. Okay, so it's over a year old, but the TS453B is definitely in my top three multimedia NASs to buy at the end of this year. Seriously, it's got it all and it's got it all at an affordable price. The TS453B, not the BE, make sure, uh, arrives for about £480. Now, it is quite expensive for a 4-bay, particularly for the home. Let me explain why. I know it's on the screen, but let me explain a little bit better. It isn't just that it's got RAID support and it can support up to 56TB using 14TB drives, although it does support one, two, three, all the way up to 14TB drives from WD Red and Seagate Ironwolf. It's because it arrived with an Intel Celeron CPU, the J3455, which is a quad core chip that runs at 1.5 gigahertz that can be burst up to 2.5 per core. Now this chip is great for things like Plex. It's great 
for running Kodi locally, it's great for running all kinds of container and backup applications. But in terms of multimedia, it can stream multiple um, HDM and 1080p streams and 4K streams. So it is a very good CPU for people trying to get those features at a good budget affordable price. But that's not all. Next to that, four, four to eight gig of DDR memory to keep things moving smoothly, and two years of manufacturer's warranty. But what makes this NAS stand out and enough to be in my top three is the sheer weight of direct access you have with this NAS. It doesn't ask you to only access it over the internet or the network, which is often the case with NAS. This device lets you have an SD card reader to offload media footage from your camera, your you know DLSR or whatever. It's got five USB 3 ports that can be used for peripheral devices like keyboard and mouse, uh, mice, as well as other USB peripherals, including um, Wi-Fi dongles and connecting it to a UPS. It has a lot of external opportunity as well as using those for expanded storage or for using them uh, for external drives for backing up purposes or making local USB drives network and internet accessible in the media applications you use. On top of that it's got an LCD panel for real-time information and a USB port on the front that's direct attached storage enabled. It gives you the ability to directly attach um, a PC or a Mac to this device and access its contents without the network or the internet. It's not really a primary means of access and it is slower than normal USB 3. But what I will say is it's great to have that flexibility in the way in which you can access this NAS. On top of that, it's got a PCIe slot for adding things like SSD cache for speeding it up and 10 GBE, as well as audio in and out and a speaker for real time audio output from this device and attaching um, microphones and speakers to the device. It's got two LAN ports of link aggregation to improve the speed. It's got a bloody HDMI port. It's got two of those. So you can connect a monitor and then run things like Kodi and a whole host of applications on HD station and enjoy media directly on your TV. And that includes Plex. Plex has its own dedicated HDMI output on this. So you don't have to use the internet or the network to watch your Plex movies and that great user interface that it gives you, as well as Kodi unofficially. And it comes with a remote control as well, so you can go through the options. So <coughs> that's why this device is in my top three multimedia NAS, because it gives you so damn much in terms of network and local accessibility. And it really facilitates you uh, more than any other NAS at this price bracket to let you enjoy the media the way you want to. In second place is a Synology NAS, and not just any Synology NAS, possibly the most popular Synology NAS that's ever existed. And I know that's an incredibly bold statement, but this 4Bay, the DS918 Plus, gives you so much of the Synology brand and backs it up with great hardware that I have not seen a NAS like this. And I know it came out a year ago, but no 4-bay NAS has ever given as much as this in the history of Synology. Let me explain. It's got the same CPU as that QNAT we've just touched on. But what's important to remember here is if you've got no need for direct access, if you don't plan on using HDMI and you want everything smooth and wireless, carefree, set it up, forget about it, this is the device for you. The DS918 Plus arrives at a lower price than the QNAP because it's got less of the hardware that you're going to use in a direct capacity, and it arrives at £430. On top of that, if we go back to it, we might don't move the script around like a moron, we can see that it's got that same CPU, the J3455 quad core mentioned earlier, and the same memory, eight to four to eight gig of DDR3L memory. But it has a longer warranty at three years, it has three USB ports that can really only be used for external storage and things like UPSs and stuff like that, but it can be expanded a further uh, five bays with the USB expansion over eSAR, um, the Synology expansion over eSATA known as the DX517. But what it does arrive with is killer software support. One big software support that I'll talk about later on. But it arrives with the BTRS file system, which is a far more um, fluid and user-friendly um, uh, user in uh, not user in what we're saying file system. That we're in the background, things like snapshots and version backup 
um, and comparisons between data sent and received is done considerably better with BTRFS than it is with the traditional file system EXT4 found on most NASes. On top of that, although this does arrive with RAID support and support in the same level of up to, up to 56 terabytes of storage using 14 TB drives supporting all the ones in between. On top of that, the device has SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID. For those who don't remember, check out the video, but otherwise, it is a more fluid RAID platform where you can mix and match drives. So in real terms, what that means is if you fill this up with two TB drives and you put it in a RAID 5 environment as you would in a 4-bay NAS, when that space runs out, you are locked in at two TB drives only. With Synology's SHR, uh, what it does is if you do put in two TB drives and then after a while, it all fills up under SHR, we've still got one disk of redundancy, what will happen is you can actually introduce different drives. You can add a bigger drive and then gradually add bigger drives and therefore be able to utilize larger capacity, something that RAID doesn't give you. I know that's an incredibly fast crazy. Do just look up what is SHR in Google after this. It will explain it all. Hopefully you'll find my video. On top of that, it's got NVMe slots built into the bottom for cache acceleration that lets you add SSDs into the base bay so super fast. NVMe uh, PCIe based SSDs into the bottom, which will then vastly improve the internal read writes of the device, which you will see the benefits of when watching media, because more commonly accessed media will be moved over to that cache area for further support later on. That'll be copies that are carried over. Now, why is this in my top three more than any other Synology other than the things I've just told you? A lot of it is to do with Plex. I have a whole video coming out soon about the best Plex NASes, but the reason this is something to care about is because of transcoding and Plex. Transcoding is when a file is, is shaped and changed, so it's better fitting to the destination device. So if you've got nothing but 4K enormous movies, but sometimes you want to watch these movies on something that you know isn't suitable for 4K, or you're going to watch it on something like a, a mobile phone, where you just think, what is the point of watching 4K on something like that? What it does, it will reshape the file so it is better fitting to the destination device, thereby making the file smaller and utilising less data in transit, and it will do that on the fly. Now, it does this in 1080p and 4K, as does the QNAP we just discussed, but in Plex, it uses more CPU, any NAS device will utilise more CPU uh, to the normal native transcoding, and the result is that NAS will have to work a lot harder to transcode within the Plex Media Server application than it would natively. To get around this, some NAT is very few, will let Plex access the transcoding engine built into the CPU. That's kind of a GPU, a graphical oomph that it has for reshaping and rendering those files. But most NATs will not let Plex do that. Plex has an option that it says, how do you want it to perform? And you do a little drop down, it goes, make my CPU hurt. You'll see it in the settings there. When you do that, the NAS will have to do the transcoding for Plex. In most cases, a NAS will end up utilizing 60 to 70% of its CPU power just on this one task, which then is not great to everyone else using the NAS and is overall uh, detrimental to the performance of the NAS. But in the case of the 918, and if you've got a, Pre a Plex Pass account, the NAS will let Plex have access to that transcoding engine. And the result is that the CPU will use drastically less CPU power to transcode that file in Plex and be able to do multiple streams at once. Something that almost all NAS devices do not let Plex to do. And that's why the 918, for its balance of price versus storage versus hardware versus software and Plex um, having access to the transcoding engine is why it's in my top three multimedia analysis of 2018. In third place is another QNAP, and as you may have already noticed, there is so much in this NAS, I've struggled to fit it on screen, but I wanted to get it all in there because it's important. This NAS, let's get, let's, you know, discuss the elephant in the room, is bloody expensive. At £2,600 for the base model, this is insanely expensive compared to those two for 400 Nicker. What is it that makes this NAS this incredibly expensive NAS, part of my top three multimedia NASes. Well, as you can see on the screen, firstly, that CPU is a beast. Um, it is an i7 quad-core 7th gen, and on top of that, 
it arrived with 32 to 64 gig of DDR4 memory. You can get some with less, then it will scale down to an i5. Um, this device has everything. Remember I mentioned earlier about the QNAT NAS and the direct access to it? This does that so much better and so much broader. It gives you just an insane level and, and just basically ultimate future proofing for you and your media in every form of access in years to come. There are NASes with better internal hardware than this, but they don't have the direct access this does, and they cost three to four thousand pounds. That's why this is in my top three. If we just skim over most of it, things like PCIe and audio that we've mentioned in the others, what this gives you as well, it's got HDMI 2.0, so true 4K HDMI output at 60 hertz. It also there are GPU card um, upgrades you can do to add a graphics card inside for rendering and VMs, and of course multimedia performance. On top of that, a Thunderbolt 3 option is out there as well. We can have it with Thunderbolt 3 direct access, and the device itself has got a chuffing Blu-ray reader. I say reader, it's read and write and the software to do it. What that means in real terms is if you've got a pre-existing library of optical Blu-ray media, this will play it and output it as you see fit. On top of that, you can introduce Blu-ray, CD and DVD media, rip them to the NAS and then use those in Plex, in Kodi, in the native applications, in MB, in Twonky and all of those. Or have it just to play through. And of course, the backups can run the other way where you can burn information to Blu-ray media and you can use the same software to make those watchable and enjoyable on your localized media that uses Blu-ray. This has it all. It does everything the earlier QNAP does but to such insanely infinite levels it will blow you away. You are looking at years and years and years and years of future proofing on this and on top of that this device can be used for everything else in NAS. Virtualization, container station, backups, uh, live photo video editing, just everything. If you're looking for an ass to do something, this will do it, along with cloud migration, RAID across eight bays and internal SSDs for caching. It has everything that the other NASes have in spades. And I know it costs significantly more than the other ones we've talked about. You know, five to six times, in fact, without the hard drive media or that. But it is the ultimate NAS right now for multimedia, for those with money to burn that want a NAS that answers the question, what NAS will do it all? I don't want to worry about media, I just want to be able to put anything on and click play. This will do it, in and out of Plex. It doesn't support hardware transcoding in the Plex Media Server application, but it doesn't have to with that kind of hardware. And that's the point. If you are interested in buying a NAS, do check out the guys at span.com. They know what they're doing, they're the NAS experts, and more importantly than anything, with 25 years in the biz, they know their onions and they've got the pedigree to prove it. If you have enjoyed this with that noisy plane going overhead, do click like and subscribe. Do watch my other videos and do check out the blog for free advice and the guides and reviews on network attached storage. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.